I just didn't want you to think I was such a wasteoid, you know? Today's review, we're gonna be having a look at McFarlane Toys Stranger Things Series 2. Mike. First thing we're gonna do is figure out how tall Mike stands. So we'll put the tape measure right to the top of his head. That's as good of a place as, ever, as any. 6.4 inches tall. What about centimeters? Somebody yells, what about centimeters? What about centimeters? What about centimeters? You're looking for centimeters at 16.3 centimeters tall. Here's Mike's comrades. There's Lucas. And on the other side, there's Dustin. Kind of wish that we would have gotten ourselves Mike in the first wave. But seeing how much they've improved upon their figures, I'm actually kind of glad that we didn't get Mike till the second wave. The only one we are missing here is Will. Now, we were missing Will in the first season as well. It's kind of funny how that works. So obviously, I don't have him on display just yet. Of course, his review will be coming soon. And then, of course, there's Eleven. I know somebody's thinking, well, what about the other 11? What about the other 11? And the other 11 is garbage. I'll put her on display just for the time being. She doesn't even really stand properly. Ugh, just a waste of plastic. There, there they are. There's all of them. When it comes to finally displaying all of these guys, when we eventually have a look at Will, this 11 is probably going to find placement somewhere else, probably in a bin. And this is going to be the way that I'm going to display the quartet. At least until we have a look at Will. For Mike's accessories, the first thing we'll have a look at is the Stranger Things clear display stand. Yes, you would be correct. Viewers in the back of the audience row, it's always the viewers in the back that are yelling out the loudest things. These are the same clear display stands that we've gotten with all the Stranger Things. But actually, let me just interrupt that train of thought by also saying, too, that we did get some more frosted colored display stands. In fact, I happen so to have one that was included with Lucas, or I think Lucas was the one that came included with this. You can see that they aren't quite the same. I guess a change of plastic, or they just decided at the last minute they were going to make it a little bit clearer in plastic. Some of the figures have these. Some of the figures have these. Most of the newer figures seem to have the clear or not as smoky clear of a plastic display stand. Uh, one peg on the top there will allow Mike to stand on top. You can clearly see, though he stands perfectly fine without it. But I like to display all the figures consistently and all sort of with the same stands. It just kind of keeps everything kind of nice and neat. And I like nice and neat. Other things that come included with the figure, he comes with his knapsack, which as you can see has been painted almost like a teal color. A color you don't see too often nowadays. Certain colors like pinks and these teals from the 80s just don't seem to resurface all that much because a lot of people just feel like this. Well, I usually look at this color and I usually think like the 80s, but I guess there are some rooms people still paint using this color, kind of like, an, like a teal. I guess teal would be the best way to describe it. At one point, that was my favorite color, teal. Now, my favorite color is, uh, is gray. I mean, that's not even close to, well, I guess somewhat close, but it's not super close. Uh, you got the zippers, or at least the little straps here down in the brown, almost like a little leather brown, and there's brown down below, and also brown at the bottom of the knapsack. Um, you can also call it a backpack. It's funny that, I don't know what review I did, I think it was maybe the Spider-Man Homecoming, yes, that's what it was. I said it was a knapsack. You'd be surprised how many people said, uh, dude, you don't even know. It's called a backpack. Hey, you know, Google. Google can be fun. Look it up. Knapsack is actually something that you can wear on your back as well. And I think back in the day, in the 80s, uh, we usually called them knapsacks more than we called them backpacks. That's just what we did. Anyways, it is pre-molded plastic. There's not really much you can do to it. You can't open it. It's got a little loop on the top, just like the old vintage knapsacks. And even like knapsacks nowadays, somebody's going to be like, stop saying knapsacks. Uh, it can detach to make things much easier to fit around him. I'll show you that in a second. But there he is. That is his backpack knapsack. We'll put it down. He also comes included with his very giant walkie-talkie. 
Some of the other figures we've already looked at came with a similar looking walkie talkie, almost an identical walkie talkie. Uh, there's the little knobs down there painted in silver, some little buttons and stuff on the top there, and even in the antenna gets a little bit of that silver treatment. He does also come with an included hand that in theory, in theory, could support said uh, walkie talkie. It does hold in his hand. This is not something, it seems straightforward on paper, seems pretty easy enough, doesn't it? But you watch, you see how difficult this is going to be to put into his hand or into his socket of his forearm. Okay, and then the, uh, the other last thing he comes included with is his flashlight. This probably was running on D's or C batteries, drained batteries like no other. I'd frequently have to replace the batteries and no easy task, you know, unscrew the bottom. Put your new batteries in. Little knob on the top, little bit of gold happening there as well, and the slight indication that the flashlight is on. If it was off, they probably would have painted this in a very dark gray or black flashlight. As for Mike, we'll dissect some of the things that we just finished looking at. We'll look at those accessories on him. Okay. So some of the earlier figures, like for example, Lucas right here, I'm just gonna put Mike down for a second. Lucas, if you look at his knapsack, uh, had the same thing, there we go, right there, there was this little detached, at least I think it was detached, maybe this one, oh, I think this one did, yeah. Uh, you would loop it over the shoulders. Mike's got the same thing happening here. I seem to remember this detaching. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it does, I don't remember. But he does have a little knapsack there on the back. Mike's seems more difficult to put over him. And uh, let me just show you what happens here. Because he's got such a big, bulkier jacket, when you drape one end over him, there you go, there's one side. This is supposed to aid you in, instead of having to pull his arm through, especially if you're doing it backwards like that. No kid's going to enjoy that. So this is supposed to help your detaching it this drapes over his his shoulder like that and then this is supposed to this is supposed to attach on the other side now the problem is you may already see the problem i'm facing there's not a whole lot of space to work with this in theory is also supposed to this is supposed to go this way so it's kind of hard to get it around and attach it to the backpack i'll just call it backpack um I've tried just sort of pushing against it, hoping it would lodge itself inside of that, but ultimately it really doesn't. I mean, you can just lie to yourself and tell you that you've done it. Good job done. I've already put the knapsack on, and very little people would probably question that if they saw it on display, unless you had a really jerk friend who already has Mike, managed to get the knapsack backpack in place, and he can call you on your bluff but I'm likely just to display it as such. It doesn't bother me terribly that I can't seem to get it. It just doesn't give you a whole lot of space to work with. You gotta get your hands in there. The arms are in the way. There's just a whole lot happening. I guess you could bring the arms a little bit up, but just doesn't seem, oh, there we go. All right, mission accomplished. All of that talk absolutely for nothing if I could only travel back in time. Maybe I wouldn't be doing reviewing if I was traveling back in time. I would just travel the world. Maybe I'd be like a fortune teller. The other thing which I know I can't get is the hand. Let's talk a little bit about that for a second. So Mike's got long sleeves. It's very obvious to anybody looking at this. Taking his hands out aren't so much the problem. Well, I guess they are the problem because you can't get your fingers in there. This hand I can take out. Of course, this isn't the hand I want to take out because the thumb has to go the opposite way. Getting the hands also back in place can be very difficult because the hands you have to, the peg is way back in there, recessed into the sleeve. Getting a hand in place, not an easy feat. And ironically enough, it has to be this hand is the one that I can't get a hold of. I just can't, with all the strength that Zeus possesses me, or gives me, I can't seem to pull the hand out. It doesn't help also that the fingers are really, really flat. The hand is slightly rubbery. Just can't pull the hand out. Probably shouldn't have eaten all those french fries before this review. 
I didn't really eat any french fries, or did I? So the hand, in theory, is supposed to go right there. I guess I could probably take some pliers or something soft that's not going to cause damage to the hand itself. Let's see if I can yank that out, is the noise it probably would make. And then I could replace it with the walkie-talkie hand. We're doing a lot of talking about hands, walkie-talkies. Somebody yells from the back, just get to the figure. Okay, so we'll get to the figure. Now that we've at least fixed the problem with the knapsack, oh, there it goes detached again. Who cares, we'll just take this off. I realize that this is gonna be the bane of my existence in this review, so I'm just gonna leave you off knapsack, whatever the naysayers will call you, and let's move on to looking at Mike. Now, like I said, Mike, I'm actually kind of happy that we got him in the second wave. I think the vast improvements of the skins or the faces are much better. Here is Dustin, for example. When we had looked at Dustin initially, I had said that his face looked almost spotted, like it was sponged. If you had ever gotten a 3D printing, or if you've ever gone to those stores, do they even exist anymore? Those 3D printed stores, those really bombed, didn't they? Uh, when you look at the faces, they're never super clear. They kind of just look like they're slightly more like sponges or they're slightly softer. Dustin had this problem. Mike doesn't seem to have that problem at all. His face seems a little bit more finalized. Although there is something I want to talk about, and we'll talk about that in a second, but I do think that the faces look better in C Series 2 than they do from Series 1. Just again, there's Dustin as the example there. Now, it doesn't go unscathed because Mike, as good as the head sculpt is, he has such a somber look on his face. Why so down, chum? I get for the fact that Will is missing. You're in love with a girl that barely notices that you're around. Don't worry, she will. Maybe that's why he's got such a somber face. Uh, the, the head from like the nose up is really good. I just wish he wasn't such so sad in the mouth. Uh, a good credit to McFarlane Toys that, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the mouth is open just enough that you can see his teeth. You see that? Just a little bit. That is a fantastic sculpt. Just kind of wish he wasn't so sad. The hair is done also quite good. Seems like there's no real additional coloring, additional paint that's been added to it other than just the black. I don't really think he necessarily needs any other color but the black like the little warm tones that they put around in his cheek areas. He's got lots of coloring happening between the shirt underneath. I, hey, I think I might have even had that shirt growing up. And then the, uh, the between the blue, the yellow, and the lighter blue there in the stripes. And then he's got the beige jacket over top. Yes, unfortunately, a suffering task to get the knapsack in place. But still, I appreciate for the fact that he gave him a jacket. You can see there he's sporting some jeans. Not really sure what's happening with the blue. It's sort of there and then it's not there. Then we decide we want to make him black. Then we want to decide we want to make him blue. They're just kind of a mixture of both. I guess it's to give him the look that he's got a darker pair of slacks. The texturing and the sculpting of the slacks are good if you can overlook for the fact that he's got these very noticeable ratcheted joints on the backs of his knees. I can't also help but notice to think that he's got really small feet. Somebody says, no, he has normal sized feet. Well, if you put him next to 11's feet, here we are talking about 11's shoe size once again, there is a drastic size difference. Could she really have feet that big? Maybe she does, I don't know. But it does seem, it can't help but make then Mike's feet seem ever that bit smaller. To his credit, even though he's got really tiny feet, his shoes at least are a little bit whiter than that of 11's. But boy, look at the size difference between the two. I guess height-wise, eh, they're about the same height, give or take. 11 just seems to have giant feet. Posability on Mike, we'll go ahead and run through that right, right now. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down. It angles left and right. The arms hinge outward. You can also move the arms all the way around. He does have the ratchet joint in the arms, which here almost seems non-existent. I guess they click in the way that they should click, but in no way, if this is the intent to make the arms not get loose, 
I've already got loose arms on Mike. This one's this arm's not so bad. This arm here is loose. What is this? What does this serve then? I don't know. Who has any idea? The hands rotate all the way around. Uh, his waist swivels back and forth, despite for the fact that he's got the big bulky jacket underneath. The legs split. He has a forward. He has a back. He ha doesn't have any swivel, by the way, in the legs, but he does have a knee bend. Legs swivel back and forth. And then he does have foot articulation. I guess in some ways the feet can be rotated all the way around. That would, in theory, break his foot. Hinges up and down, and it also angles back and forth. Mike's a good-looking figure. He's just a little cumbersome when it comes to certain things to him. And I guess that really the flaws are more so the flaws with the person who's reviewing the figure. <coughs> just for the fact that I had such a struggle to get his hands out of place. Well, the hand out of the socket. I can't still replace it. But let's hope in final looks I actually get my stuff together. The knapsack, finally getting around to solving that little hiccup. It seemed to take a slightly larger amount of the chunk of review to talk a little bit about something I ultimately fixed. At least I fixed that. Let's hopefully see if I can fix the walkie-talkie. Oh, oh, way to put pressure on yourself there, reviewer, by saying you're going to have the walkie-talkie in his hand. Well, sure enough, I did deliver. I ended up taking just a pair of pliers, and sure enough, I was able to pop the hand out a lot easier than me trying to grab it with my fingers. Unfortunately, though, his hand is really small. And fitting it in already a sleeve that takes up a lot of his hand when you put it in doesn't leave a whole lot of space for him to hold the walkie-talkie. And he sort of just awkwardly holds it. Not really as if he's talking properly in it. Problem is that you can't rotate the arms. You can, you can bend the arms, but you can't rotate them enough to make it actually look as if Mike's talking into his walkie-talkie. But we have, had, we have to at least acknowledge that we've had some success here. The knapsack, sure enough, I was able to finally get it attached, much to the dismay of many people that are calling it backpacks. And finally, here in Final Oaks, I was able to get the walkie-talkie into his hand. Mike is a decent enough looking figure that I think he looks a lot better than the, some of the figures that we had gotten from Series 1. Lucas was good, Dustin had a good head sculpt, but he still had that problem kind of looking like he was 3D printed. I like that they've rectified that problem by giving what looks to be much smoother looking faces on all the Series 2 figures. I think the paint is also leaps and bounds better. It just kind of seems to pop a little bit more than some of the previous Series 1 figures that we had already had a look at. Yes, Will is a fine, fine, or Mike is a fine, fine looking figure. I just wish he didn't look so somber in the face. Cheer up, buddy. You're going to get the girl in the end, so you should be happy. Plus, you'll also fight a clown in another movie. I guess maybe that's why he's so upset. He realizes the other role he had to take, and uh, fighting an evil clown, I probably would. I'd rather stick, personally speaking, with Eleven and the rest of the gang than having to deal with Pennywise. But either way, a decent enough release from McFarlane Toys. So far, really happy with what they're doing with Series 2, and hopefully we'll get more for a Series 3. Today we were having a look at the McFarlane Toys. This was the Stranger Things Series 2, and this was Mike. Finally, with walkie-talkie in his hand, and no, his knapsack is not over his shoulders. And no, it is also called a knapsack. Look it up. Google can be fun. Google can be your friend. Uh, stay tuned, guys, because certainly, like I said, we're going to have a look at Will. Will is sort of MIA, and I guess I deliberately did that because he was missing, after all, in the all of first season. I might as well have waited to have, him, uh, have a look at him in the last video. Uh, this series only had three figures with technically a fourth figure but it was really only the upside down will which is pretty much the same will that we're going to be having a look at just with a slightly more paler complexion i didn't get a chance to find that one but if i do a review of him will also come as well make sure you hit that subscribe button bunkos it's just below this video if you haven't done so already i will guarantee you that when new videos are coming to this channel for the most part you won't miss out and above and beyond just the Stranger Things stuff, certainly more reviews will be coming also to this channel, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.